We uh, touched a little bit on salt marshes and mangroves. Uh, let's go through that again now to look at a uh, little bit more about human impacts. Uh, so this is under the type of coastal wetlands. Uh, wetlands are basically uh, where the groundwater is uh, so shallow that you always have some water above the ground, which makes it a uh, very uh, good place for uh, vegetation and all kinds of uh, plants to grow grasses and so on because there is nutrients typically being supplied by uh, some kind of uh, flow that's happening and there is usually rain so the uh, places wetlands tend to be very rich in uh, biodiversity and they also tend to be very very good uh, carbon sequesters because because there is always water, whatever leaf material, uh, carbohydrates, protosynthesized fall down, are not easily respired, more falls on top and they get buried. Right? Any carbohydrate that's produced by photosynthesis and is not respired is going to be sequestering carbon. Right? So ecosystems, uh, these are basically ecosystems where the water table is very close to the surface and they're mostly saturated and these produce peat deposits because of this process of falling organic matter getting compressed as we saw when the barrier islands roll over and produce uh, peat deposits right and these are uh, usually uh, veg uh, inundated or colonized by halophytic plants which means they are adapted to salt because the water is brackish it's a mixing of the ocean and the land there. Even the groundwater is going to be uh, salinized by ocean water uh, seeping in. And they are found along coasts of US, Japan, uh, South America, and so on. <coughs> so we already talked about how salt marshes go from about 35 south to the north all the way into the Arctic Circle, Siberia. Uh, Norway, uh, North Sea and so on and you have mangrove forests in the tropics and subtropics going all the way into warm regions like uh, the Gulf of uh, Mexico. Gulf of Mexico is here sorry uh, has even uh, this is kind of the northest tropical waters uh, you will get but the Red Sea also has uh, very warm uh, salty waters because that's also an evaporative desert ocean right not as uh, heavy as the Dead Sea Be Dead Sea is not getting any inflow anymore so it's actually losing volume every year and there are plans to somehow move water from the Red Sea into the Dead Sea so that Dead Sea doesn't disappear but nonetheless Red Sea also has a Mediterranean type circulation because it produces heavier water locally which flows out at the bottom and the open ocean water from the Arabian Sea flows in uh, at the surface Right. Okay. So those are the salt marshes and mangrove swamps. And you have, as we said, between 30 degree uh, latitude and 65 degree latitude. You can see that there are some in the southern hemisphere as well. Um, and um, mangrove swamps are mostly tropics. And they have really mangrove forests. Mangroves are trees. They can grow pretty tall, as you can see here. Their roots are in salty waters and they have adapted greatly. You can, you should go see them in Tane Creek and so on. Uh, unfortunately, tons and tons of plastic under the mangrove trees, which is disgusting, but nonetheless, uh, they have this tripod like uh, roots that allow them to grow out and get rid of excess salt through crystallizing salt on the leaves and so on and so forth and I've already mentioned how many ecosystem services they provide and they have characteristics obviously nurseries feeding grounds for many commercially important marine animals uh, they are efficiently cleansing the polluted water so as I said they are the transition zone from land to the ocean they take out the nutrients they take out a lot of the the pollutants and so on and they pr leave cleaner water into the ocean other than acting as wave dampers as cyclones come in and so on uh, they absorb coastal water from flooding and they protect the shores from erosion every time you have vegetation soil and so on it's harder to erode them like a forest right 
but nonetheless loss of coastal wetlands half of the US coastal, uh, coastal wetlands have been lost to development as we said people love to live closer to the water more and on the water literally and there is agriculture which is increasing the runoff and nutrient loading and of course there are many industries uh, being built on coastal wetlands or releasing untreated waste uh, into the uh, wetlands and so on. Uh, US did come up with the Wetland Protection uh, Act in 1986 which has reduced the uh, loss of wetlands but there is a constant tussle between the development groups which are rich and powerful and can lobby the government to change the rules and that all we also said that the insurances actually tend to uh, um, tempt people to go live closer to the water if they can pay off the insurance uh, premiums right uh, but now we are adding to that uh, sea level rise sea level has already risen about a meter on average over since industrial revolution but now sea level rise is accelerating for example the sea level f between um, North Carolina and Massachusetts on the East Coast is going at three to four times the global rate just like the northern Bay of Bengal uh, because of the dynamics plus as the Greenland glacier melts the gravitational pull of the Greenland glacier which is not trivial begins to reduce and that water sh sloshes towards the US coast imagine so much glacier mass actually changes the gravitational pull and that glacier melts that gla gra gla the gravitational pull is going to be reduced so originally uh, the uh, US wetlands were uh, about 87 uh, million hectares and now they are about 43 less than half okay uh, there is million acres on this side 215 and 106 and million hectares on this side so that's a massive loss. So this is a common uh, thing, common occurrence across the world. It's not just the U.S. Uh, every country is losing, India is losing uh, massive amounts of mangroves. As I said, there is some evidence that the um, loss is decreasing. Loss has not stopped. We get happy when the loss becomes less because we are just so worried about the loss. But actually the loss has to stop and we have to start recovering mangrove forests long way to go